Hi friends, this is Marie and in this segment we're going to show you how I make nice strong hands for needle felted dolls. You'll learn how to make hands strong enough to grip and actually hold on to things using armature wire and our MC1 batting. And if you like this, more tips on needle felting, wet felting, or nano felting, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can find out when our latest videos come out. And if you don't follow us on Facebook, check us out at fb.com slash livingfelt. Also our group, Living Felt Friends, where we have live broadcasts almost every week of the year and we even do felt alongs. So make sure to subscribe, join in the fun, and let's make some strong hands for your needle felted dolls. In this section, we're going to look at how we felt hands for our felted dolls and we'll look at just briefly how they are attached. I like to attach them all at the end, but I promised a video to show folks how to continue working on their hands since we are recording this while we're in the middle of our first ever felt along for needle felting a doll. So these are examples of some felted hands and this is a method I've kind of just developed over the years. I found that I wanted to make it a little bit easier to make fingers and that's when I developed this method and then I modified it more recently last year um, by stiffening the, the fingers so that they hold up to handling. So, um, And I also want them to be really strong. Like this doll's hands are cute but you could bend the fingers um, lots of different ways and he wouldn't really hold on to anything so they're not very strong fingers. Um, but he has fingernails and uh, that's kind of fun. And this is a very strong hand that will really grip onto things. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. And we're also going to look at an option for stiffening the fingers so that they can hold up to being bent and uh, reshaped without roughing up, which happens to a lot of my dolls. So I'll show you here as an example of witchy. She is a small doll with small fingers, but her fingers really hold on to her broom, which was ideal for me. And that's our goal today. Nice, strong fingers that won't get roughed up with handling. These are the basic supplies I use for the hands. Uh, the first thing is uh, we use Living Felt MC1 batting. This is my favorite wool for needle felting, a nice, firm, smooth surface. And this color happens to be peachy. This lighter version is pale peach. And we have tons of skin tones from even more neutral um, to much, much darker. So that's what we'll be working with. This is an armature wire. It's 22 gauge. Uh, it's painted white. We also have black and these are under needle felting supplies armature wire in our website. These are just a pair of channel locks or needle nose pliers, whatever you like to cut wire with. We're working today with Paverpol, which is a fabric hardener or stiffener. You can use it full strength, but for this project we're going to use a 50-50 solution with water. And I just take an old makeup container or small jar and make up the solution and then you can keep it for a long time. And then we'll use a paintbrush to apply this to the fingers. Now the Paverpol is completely optional. My dolls just get handled a lot in the shop and I found the fingers were roughing up and they're one of the hardest things to make in the first place so this was my solution for just giving them a little more life and longevity. In making our hands we first have to start with the fingers. We're going to make a whole bunch of fingers. I encourage that you make more fingers than you need but the important thing to remember is to keep some long wires for attaching to the arm. These are too short to do a really good job and these are just my model hands, but you want to have at least a couple of wires that will be long enough to go up the arm. And so just make them, you know, much longer than you think you need because we're going to make these fingers and the fingers will be see the wool is like here, the fingers will be the finger themselves and then they'll go down into the hand a bit. 
They don't need to be too bulky too far down uh, because you don't want this too bulky, but it is helpful to have it go below the knuckle line so that you have a better blend. So we're going to make these wires. Um, you know, I suggest making your initial wires once you have an idea of how long your fingers will be, just make sure that at least a few of them are extra long and you can save them back. And this is how we do it. We're going to just bend the wire in half and then you can kind of crimp it at what would be the finger. I'd like to take a very thin strip of your fiber and I do love batting for this because it really grabs onto itself and you can you know you can use the power paw, the stiffener, fabric hardener or not use the fabric hardener that's really up to you um, and I'll show you what to do if you don't want to use that so I just run the fiber right through that little bend and then now I'm going to twist what would be the finger at least a little bit. I just wanted to kind of get it through that hole. If your hands or fingers are not all that strong, you can use your needle nose pliers here to kind of twist this. I like to just hold my finger and thumb here to create that gap and keep the wire separated. You don't have to go too far. Just play with it and make a bunch so that you can kind of get the idea. So the first thing I do, I call it making a cotton swab tip. So we've got our little loop and the wool is loose. Just kind of fold this over and give your wool a couple of twists. I'm pulling it a little taut here on my finger, making a little bed. I twist the wire over so that it's nice and flush against that wire. And then I'm just going to fold the little tip back onto the wire and give a couple of more twists. Just keep control of it. Don't let it do what it wants to do. You keep really good control of it so that it twists nice and flush around the wire. And you don't want, you want it to wrap on the wire without twisting. So usually what I do is once I get a couple of wraps like this, then I switch hands and I use this my dominant hand is my control hand while I guide the fibers down. So this is all you have to do is make a few of these which would be like little sausages, finger sausages I call them. And if you're going to be needle felting them and not use the fabric stiffener, just pull off your fiber, wrap it like sort of dry felt it with your fingers before you let go of it. If you're using roving or longer fibers that don't kind of grab onto themselves, you might have to just tack it down with your felting needle a little bit sooner. But I'm basically helping the fibers entangle just in my fingers. And then you can take your felting needle and just lightly tack, tack, tack all those fibers down. It is a challenge when your fingers are really skinny and you'll find that if you use the fabric hardener it'll really help. If it feels like when you're poking it with your needle that the fiber is scooting back, flip your roll over and go from the opposite direction. You really want your fingers to be all nice and smooth. Now when I'm using the fabric stiffener these days and I'm making fingers this tiny, I don't even use my needle. I basically just wrap, wrap, wrap and then I'm going to bring in a white tray here. It's nice to have like a, a vessel or something to put your fingers in or um, it could be wax paper or something like that. And then I'm going to take my 50-50 solution and my little paintbrush and basically just dab it onto the digit and it looks all clumpy. This will dry clear. You would find that if you use this layer upon layer it would really change how your felt looks. And then I just take it and I roll it in between my fingers just like that. Roll it in between your fingers just so that it absorbs a little beyond the surface layer. And if it seems fuzzy just try going in one direction. 
there we go so this is kind of how it looks right now you see it against my own hand it looks okay and then tomorrow it's gonna look even better so that's all you do and I'm not oversaturating it I'm not dipping it in the solution I'm just trying to get all those surface layers laying down and then I'm just gonna set them all aside and let them dry overnight once you have all your fingers made and I do encourage making more than you need so that you have some to pull from we're just going to stack them together and I encourage you to try and find like which finger is which I usually make one and I know it's the thumb but look at your own hand and notice the size of your own hand so when I look at my hand you can see that the thumb I always notice that the the top of my thumb comes just above the knuckle of my index finger. They're not even, it's not all up here. And that's kind of a common thing to do is for people to put the thumb too high. And when we're shaping the hand, we also put it a little more like on the, the face. So rather than webbing it, you know, five digits across, the thumb is a little more on the inside. And that allows you to get a little better pose of your hand if the thumb is a little more forward. And notice how short it is. On my hands, my index finger is shorter than my ring finger. And I just kind of compare that arch of my hands. Um, and my hands don't come out perfect by any means, but it just gives you a bit of a guide. And also, the palm of the hand is about as long as my middle finger. So from here where my wrist meets my hand to this knuckle it's about as long as this or this finger and then I compare the the size of my palm to parts of my face whether it's my cheek or a finger from uh, one finger going from the corner of the eye down to the corner of the mouth if you want your hands to be right you might compare whether you look in a book or look at your own face you might compare those kinds of distances I don't worry about it too much. I usually know if I want a doll to have long fingers or short fingers. And if you make a whole bunch, then you can choose which ones you like the best. So what I usually do, like this one's the stubby one, I want it to be the thumb. And this one is, uh, this one's a little more delicate, so I want it to be the ring finger. And that's, I mean the uh, pinky finger. That's kind of what I do. And then I'm gonna stack these up. I notice how this pinky comes down to the first knuckle here and this one just comes over that first knuckle. I kind of stack it all up like this and then I usually decide who's going to be my wrapping wires. I found that I kind of like uh, I kind of like the middle wires to be the wrapping not the thumb. I like uh, meaning what's going to go around the wrist or what's going to go around this bunch one of the things we're going to do is take some of these wires and secure everybody together just like that with the, the wires that we already have. So group everybody together and wrap this one very, very tight. Get this out of the way. Wrap this very, very tight around. You don't want a lot of bulk. You want it to really cinch it down just like that. You can go around twice if you want. Just don't go down too far. And then you can do go this, wrap this one around, but go the opposite direction. And that's going to give you a nice torque and hold everything together. Cool. So now that those are held together, then you can kind of build the hand. And I do like to add the thumb in here, but you can get some initial wraps on the fingers first. Once I have the fingers bound together how I want them, then I take a thin strip of the batting and just work as thinly as you're comfortable with. S just start wrapping it around the wire, again very, very tight, and don't let it get any twists in it. Go around a couple of times, and then you might want to work your way back up the fingers I let it, I try not to stretch it too tight across the fingers um, because we're going to want a needle felt through. So you want, we're going to needle felt through this little webby part. So you might want it to have a little bit of give and you want to have a little bit so that you can sort of bind it through either side. 
You can always come back and patch it, and sometimes I put wool down in between, but that usually shows. And then know where the thumb goes. So the thumb is going to go on the index finger. You want to make sure you make you know, a right and a left hand. And don't let it be too tall. Remember where our thumb goes, about to right there. So I'm going to pull that thumb down, and then we're just going to use all of this in the hand, which is normal anyway. The thumb digit comes all the way down to the base of the hand, so this worked out perfectly. So I have just a little bit wrapped around the hand, and then I'm going to wrap around where this thumb goes. I don't like this bottom part to be too, too tight because we're going to add a little bit more and, and sort of splay it out when we want to uh, attach it to our arm. So let that be a little bit loose. We're going to add more wool later. And so for now, if you feel like that's a pretty good place to start, even before you tear off, you can just needle felt gently, shallow strokes, all the way through. And basically, you're going to run your needle in between these digits that you've created. Gentle, gentle, gentle. Compress it. Don't let it be lofty. You want a nice, firm hand that's going to stay together. And once you kind of get it starting to tack down, flip it over. And you're going to want to play with your thumb, too. And you know, bring your, bring your thumb around so that you're able to pose it later. So pose it now and give yourself a little web between the two sides and you can even run your fiber back in between like that around the the fingers. You probably won't put too much fiber on the hand but if you do you know you can just make another one. Treat it like a good practice. You should like it when you put it on your doll. And our fingers are going to stay together because we power pulled them or used a fabric hardener. You might try Mod Podge or whatever you have. We do carry the power pull right now. Um, we bring it in from Europe. It's um, not always readily available. And if we can keep it in or find a nice substitute, we certainly will. So this is all I do with the hand. Continue needle felting it, gentle, shallow strokes. Make sure it's going to hold together as you handle it and just needle felt it. If you're poking all the way through, that's going to happen initially and then you're just going to go back to the middle to the middle. So take your time, compact it, tame all your fuzzies down and try to make it so that there's not a real definite line in between the fingers um, where the wool meets the fingers. You really want to blend that all the way through. If you want a really um, defined hand, you can also go back and add knuckles. And I do that, you can do it with a strip, or if you have a big hand you're felting, you can do it with little tiny bumps. Little tiny bumps on the knuckles. But a little hand, that'll look too knobby, so you might just try a strip like we did, like how you make a wrinkle. And that's all you got to do. So when we come back and when we finish our dolls, remember we're going to cut this stuff off and then have or maybe we'll cut off now these are nice and long so play with notice how this this moves the thumb and that's not always desirable you may not want to use both but we're going to cut off some of these wires and the rest are going to run up the arm of our doll and those are my hot tips for making the hands take your time hands are real real obvious and you want to like them whether they look you know, puppety, muppety, uh, feminine, um, wiry, whatever, however you want the hands, just spend your time and get up close and personal and really spend the time to needle felt all this down and make it nice and smooth and even because you don't want a hand that's going to come apart as you put your doll together, as you clothe it, or as other people admire it for the years to come. When you're ready to put your hand on your doll, the arm should look something like this so that I'm terminating it into like a wrist joint and then this wire, if you still have any wire up here, is wrapped fairly tight around and doesn't come down too much further than this. You don't want it to come down into this portion. You want to position your hand so that it's about the right length, so thumbs up, you know, thumbs up towards the tummy and the fingers fall 
you know, high up on the thigh. You might stand and find your own positioning. Uh, this is about where I like to put them, unless you want them to have like little short arms. That's kind of cute sometimes too. But this is about where I would put it on this doll. What I've done is taken all the hand wires, and your hand should look pretty much like this, grouped some together in the middle, and chosen some longer wires that I'm going to use to uh, wind up the length of the arm. Find your positioning on the arm, and what you can do is just use some of this wire, put the wrist joint like you're going to try and get it right in there in the wool as much as you can. I don't wrap this wire down too, too far because I don't want to make this part of the hand too long. This is going to be the base of the hand and the wrist joint. So seat it here on this wrist joint and you can put a little piece of your floral tape right there. Um, but we're going to take these wires off before they go too far up the arm. So let's just get it on there in the first place and then we're going to wrap these wires up to connect it to the arm. Pull that really tight and notice you know how good that will that will work if you pull it super tight and that's just my initial um, connection to get it laying down while I work you don't need too much tape on there you don't want too much bulk to try and needle felt over there's going to be plenty of bulk with the wires already but now I can take these wires off um, because they're just going to make too much bulk as we go up the arm Ratchet those down with your needle nose pliers and just squish everything in the best you can. The real anchor is going to be these, these long spindly wires. So when you wrap these, wrap them very, very tight and hold your hand in place. At some point you may use your needle nose pliers to really wrench them down. Or if your hands are sensitive, you know, you could wear leather gloves or gardening gloves or something like that if the wa pokey wires bother you. So notice that I'm just wrapping really, really, really tight. And wherever the wire is sticking up, we're going to go back and pinch it down because it always wants to find its way up through the wool. So really pinch it, twist it, wrap it down so it's flush because arms generally tend to be a lot skinnier than legs or other parts that we bury under a bunch of wool. And if you don't have to make it bulky, that's really helpful, meaning if you don't have to put wool on. And anyway, wire just wants to find its way out. Okay, so then one last wire, and we're going to have a really secure hand now. And as fiddly as it is to make, it can really pay off. Now, we have a nice, strong hand, and my, I was viewing my, my hand backwards, so <laughs> my thumb is backwards, that's hilarious. Well, this hand wasn't for this doll anyway, so um, this is how you attach it, and then we're going to you know, finish putting wool on the arm and finish putting wool on the hand and just blend it all together. But before we do that, take your floral tape and just go back over these loose wires. Make sure to get all these wires laying down right there. So just finish off with some floral tape before we put our wool on. That's all you gotta do.
I really hope that you found this helpful. I would so value your feedback and input below. Please leave your comments, and if you don't already subscribe, hit the bell so you can get our latest tips on needle felting, wet felting, and nano felting. And hey, even let us know what you would like a tutorial on. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Living Felt, and our group, Living Felt Friends. We have live broadcasts almost every week of the year. We have special guests come on and share their tips and tricks, and we even do felt alongs with our community, which is just an amazing group of people. I hope you join us. Thanks for joining in, and please leave your comments below so we can bring you more of the information that you would like. Thanks so much. Have a great day.